Hey, this is His Word Unveiled. We are in the book of Ruth. Our last video, we hit chapters one and two, and today we're finishing up this book, and we are hitting chapters three and four. So this is going to finish a beautiful story, this story of commitment, this story of just really good people, just solid people who are living on purpose and living in, in um, such integrity and humility and selflessness and giving um, just generosity and and purity and just so so much goodness and the way that God he sees he he knows how we're living he sees how we're living and he pays attention and and he sees this man is a good man and this woman a good woman Ruth and Boaz and he connects them together he allows their paths to cross um, Though there was hardship and a hard season with Naomi losing her husband and Ruth losing her husband, yet um, impressing upon Ruth's heart to stick with her mother-in-law, to cling to her, to remain with her, to leave everything she knew, and to go to a land that was unfamiliar, to be with a people who was unfamiliar, to serve a God who was unfamiliar at that time. And Ruth gave everything up to follow and to cling to Naomi. And through that, the Lord blessed her. Through that, the Lord raised her up and, and brought her to, to know him and to know um, to know blessing, to, to reap harvest, to, um, to live and to live abundantly. Just a beautiful story of commitment, of, of, of goodness, of just pure goodness. So good. This story is beautiful. Um, so today, our reading is Ruth chapters 3 and 4, and we're going to finish up the book of Ruth. So hit pause and read, and read purposefully. Let's not just be inspired by these stories, by the Word of God. Let's be changed by them. There's a big difference. There's such a big difference. We can be inspired, and, and it can make us feel good, and be you know full of passion, and zeal, and even movement, but let's Let's move from even be inspired and let's allow that inspiration to truly change us. Let's let the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, His Holy Spirit just change us and do something in us with this story that it actually shapes things and moves things around, literally moves things up in us so that it transforms parts, you know, of ways that we feel and how we're going to respond and how we think about things. Let's let His Word change us and not just, we don't want to just feel good afterward. We want to feel convicted. We want to feel you know, driven into into things and new ways of doing things and new ways of seeing things. We want to be changed. So Ruth, chapters three and four, read, read with purpose, read so that the Lord can do something in you, that he is truly changing you as you are reading. Listen, open yourself up as you're reading and hear him speaking. Ruth, chapters three and four. Lord, we give this time to you. We lift you up. And we give this time to you. We pray that you, that you step in, that you are here, that you remain, Lord, that, that you show off. You allow us to see how big and strong and fully capable you are, Lord. And in that capability, in, your, in this omnipotence that you hold, Lord, that you being all-powerful, change us, Lord. We give you permission to come, um, Come into the scene of our lives. Come into this moment as we're reading and change us. Do something in us. Let it. Let us never go back to even what we are right now through our reading. Change us. Make us a completely different purpose or person, Lord. Just transform areas in our lives. Weed out, expose, convict, bring to light. Lord, do something in us where we we experience more and and we. Um, we just encounter more of you through this and through our reading, through simply reading. Lord, may we not overcomplicate this, but, but that we just learn to read and to be in your presence, that we learn to be open and, and ready for you to just pour out and pour in and move within, Lord, so that things can happen, that we give you space, that we give you freedom to reign, to rule, to lead our emotions, to lead our thoughts, Lord, change us, grow us, teach us, speak to us. Father, we want this real. We don't, we don't want to do this just to do it and just to, to feel good about ourselves. We want real. We want real change. We want real growth. We want real connection with you. So, Father, we just ask you to meet us here and to do your thing, to, 
to have your way. Lord, we love you, and we are so ready. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Ruth chapter 3. Let's jump into this incredible story. Um, okay, so we see that all laid out. The last chapter, our last video, we see how Boaz um, just blessed Ruth, uh, acknowledged her, and spoke life into her and said, Hey, stay in my field. Let me provide for you. Let me protect you. You remain here. Um, even telling his those who, who worked for him and reaped the fields, um, he told them, Hey, you know, purposely, what you have gathered, pull some out and leave there for Ruth. Um, he allowed her to come to his table and dip her bread into his vinegar, just blessing her, um, giving her the abundance of, of what he even had, just seeing this favor that he poured upon um, her life and Ruth coming back and expressing, hey, this was Boaz. This I was in Bo the field of Boaz and he did this for me and he blessed me in this way and he spoke kindly to me in this way. And, and Naomi was, we just, um, through the reading, we just see her, this awareness and, hey, I, this is bigger. I know God's doing something in this, that Boaz is a good man. He is one of our closest relatives. There's something, there's something here. Um, so we saw that in the last chapter. And this carries on to chapter three. Naomi says, um, says this to Ruth. My daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? Now is not Boaz our kinsman, with whose maids you were? Behold, he winnows barley at the threshing floor tonight. So Naomi is saying, okay, Ruth, I want what's best for you. I want what's best. I want you to be provided for, you to be taken care of. Um, hear me and hear my heart. And so Naomi lays this out and says, Boaz is going to be um, at the threshing floor tonight. He's going to be there dealing with and, and working with the barley, working with his fields. This is where he's going to be. And Naomi lays out these instructions for Ruth. Um, she tells Ruth to wash herself, to anoint herself, to, to dress in, in, in beautiful clothes, to prepare herself, to get herself ready. And she says, um, she tells Ruth after Boaz, you know, feast with this, celebrates this harvest, after he drinks and, and eats and is merry, then um, as he lays down then in the barley fields, when he lays himself down, she instructs Ruth to wash herself, make herself ready and clean, anoint herself, and to, without being known, quietly, um, in a hidden way, a secret, pure way, to go to Boaz, to uncover his feet. And this word uncover, it means to um, to to def defile, to reveal, to to uncover. I mean, you literally see uncovering his feet is what she was instructed to do, and this was a symbol of of Ruth saying, "Here I am," and presenting herself and uncovering him, and saying, "Even in in you being exposed and and revealed and anything of you, I am presenting myself to you." So she was instructed to uncover his feet as he lay down, and to lay down where his feet were to lay down at the, um, you know, the edge of where he was laying. So right at his feet, she's laying. And it says in scripture that we read that hopefully you picked up that, that Boaz woke up and saw her lying there at his feet. And he said, who are you? We see that in verse nine, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your maid. So spread your covering over your maid for you are a close relative. So she is making herself known and saying, here I am. If you would have me as your wife, you know, here I am. I am presenting myself to you. I'm making myself available to you. And just this intimate way, um, this very personal, um, pure, intimate way of, of making herself known and available to him. In verse 10, then, we see his response. It says, Then he said, May you be blessed of the Lord, my daughter. You have shown your last kindness to be better than the first by not going after young men, whether rich or poor. So Boaz is an older gentleman. He is, I believe, the brother of um, Eli Malek. So Naomi's husband was Eli Malek. And Boaz, then, there's a brother. Um, to, it, it expresses two brothers, I believe, one is closer, one is the closest kin, and then Boaz is right after this one. So he is the second closest kin then here at this time. And and it's revealed that Boaz is an older gentleman, so probably um, uncle's age. 
being her father's brother, um, an uncle. So we see then the age difference and Boaz points that out and says, you know, you're a beautiful woman, a kind woman, full of generous um, generosity and, and integrity and strength and just this is who you are and you could have gone after any younger man and, um, you know, and blessed are you, he says, who did not go after these younger men, that you would choose me, that you would choose to be, li be lying at my feet and presenting yourself to me in this time. And Boaz says, blessed are you and blessed of the Lord. Verse 11 says, now my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you whatever you ask. For all my people in the city know that you are a woman of excellence. I love this. She could have been any woman. She could have, she could have come with Ruth and been entitled. She could have been just stuck in her suffering, complaining, grumbling about what she had to leave. She could have been any woman that she wanted. She had a choice to carry herself in however she saw fit. And she chose to carry herself as a woman of excellence. And Boaz brought it out saying, you are a woman of excellence, that people know this about you. People know who you are. People know your heart. People see you because you have made it known that, that when we live in that authentic, surrendered, pure way, people notice. And he brings that up. The people in this city know that you are a woman of excellence. Um, now it is true, he says in verse 12, I am a close relative. However, there is a relative closer than I. So then we see Boaz in his integrity. And, and no matter how beautiful and how wonderful of a woman she was, no matter how available she's presenting him, herself to him, Boaz comes out and says, I am a close relative and I will do whatever I can for you to provide for you, to be there for you. Um, but there is a closer relative. Because remember, back in the Old Testament, I believe it was Leviticus. Um, maybe not Leviticus. Oh, man. And I can't even remember the story. But we had that story of, of where one, um, the husband died. And then, um, oh, yes. So, so he did not live for the Lord. Okay, there was, a, oh, man, who was this? I cannot even think. Can I even think who this was? <clears throat> Tamar. It was Tamar. I believe it was Tamar. That Tamar had, yes, had a husband. He did evil on the side of the Lord. The Lord struck him dead. Then his brother, because it was that was what that was what they did. That was their culture. That when when the husband died, the brother of that husband would come then and take possession. That he would have rights of the wife, so that he would marry the wife. They would come together. They would have children, and and that and that the inheritance would be of the husband, the original husband who died. So the brother would step in in a selfless way, would would have children with his brother's wife who had died. So he had died, she's a widow. The brother would come, they would have children, and those sons and daughters would not be the brother's children. It would be the dead husband's children. He would be lifting up, he would be preserving the name of, of the brother. Um, hopefully that made sense, but that's what they did. So the next, the closest relative, the brother would come in, would marry the wife and would raise up these children, would, would allow his name to be preserved. That would be the inheritance of, of that brother, that brother who had passed. And if, um, so we saw in that story, even with Tamar, that the brother came, that he then yes, had sex with the wife but then he spilled his semen out and the Lord then struck him dead. And that whole, that whole thing with Tamar and, and Judah. Um, so we see this, that that was their culture. That was, was what was to happen. So Ruth's husband died. So the closest of kin then can come. But when, when um, that closest of kin, when that person would come and take Ruth to be his wife, then their family would not be his family. That wouldn't be his his inheritance. It would be the inheritance of that dead relative, of the husband um, who has now passed on. So we see this, that Ruth presented herself to Boaz. Everyone knows that Ruth's husband died, that whoever would be the husband, whoever would take Ruth, would come in in a selfless way, give up his inheritance, and allow 
what was to be the children that that they were to have together as husband and wife that those children would be the inheritance of the husband who is passed on. So Boaz says, he makes it so known, hey, there's a closer relative. I am so willing to do this, to take you as my wife, but there's a closer relative. So let me talk to him. You wait, you be still, you know that I want to provide for you, but I want to do the right thing and I want to approach this other relative. So this carries us into chapter four then. Chapter three ends with Boaz just blessing her and giving her barley and, and saying, you know, here, here is my commitment in doing whatever I can for you, but wanting to do what's right. So um, chapter four then, we see this where Boaz waits at the gate of where he knew this close relative would be and he approaches him and he says, hey, this is about, you know, this is concerning Naomi and Ruth and you are the closest relative. So you have right, if you want to buy this field, if you want to buy this land that was from Naomi's husband, Eli Malek, our relative, you were the closest one, do you want to buy this land? And he says, yes, I'll buy it. This, this closest relative, this man that Boaz is approaching, he says, yes, I will buy it. Then in verse five, it says, then Boaz said, on the day you buy the field from the hand of Naomi, you must also acquire Ruth the Moabitess, the widow of the deceased, in order to raise up the name of the deceased on his inheritance. Verse 6 says, The closest relative said, I cannot redeem it for myself because I would jeopardize my own inheritance. Redeem it for yourself. You may have my right of redemption, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the custom in former times in Israel concerning the redemption and the exchange of land to confirm any matter. A man removed his sandal and gave it to another, and this was the manner of attestation in Israel. So um, what happened then? He heard that he had to take Ruth then as his wife. He was all about the land, wasn't about taking Ruth. And Boaz brought that up and saying, hey, you've, you've got to take both. You can't take one or the other. This is the full inheritance that you would, that, that you would have, that you would um, take over. So he says, can't do that. That would jeopardize my inheritance and what I have that I can't, you know, raise up and help preserve this man's inheritance and in, in taking Ruth. So he says, I can't do that. I can't redeem it. You're the next in line. So you may have my right to redemption. And Boaz in doing this, it was all done correctly. And yes, approaching this man and also having the elders, the people come together so that they could witness to what's going on. So he gave Boaz his right then to this land, to Ruth, um, the Moabitess. Then verse nine says, then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, you are witnesses today that I have bought from the land or the hand of Naomi all that belonged to Eli Malek and all that belonged to Chilion and Melon. Moreover, I have acquired Ruth the Moabitess, the widow of Melon, to be my wife in order to raise up the name of the deceased on his inheritance. Such selflessness, such I'm doing this for this reason, I am I am taking her as my wife. Um I'm doing this to raise up the name of the deceased. So it's not about him. He's not concerned about what he can gain from this. Um, it, it, just beautiful. And then continuing in verse 10, so that the name of the deceased will not be cut off from his brothers or from the court of his birthplace. You are witnesses today. All the people who were in the court and the elders said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, both of whom built the house of Israel. And may you achieve wealth in Ephrathah and, because, and become famous in Bethlehem. I love that, that they said, may the Lord make the woman who's coming into your home like Rachel and Leah. Knowing the importance of Rachel and Leah, that they were the mothers. They were these women who birthed the children of Israel, the, the tribes of Israel. That this all stemmed from Rachel and Leah and this blessing given to Ruth and Boaz, that, that their blessing, that what comes from them may be like what came from Rachel and Leah. Beautiful. Um, verse 13, so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife and he went into her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. And this son is going to be a big deal, that this blessing is given. These two good people that the Lord connected and brought together for his glory, for his purpose. 
verse 14 says, Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed is the Lord, who has not left you without a Redeemer today, and may his name become famous in Israel. So what a work of the Lord and blessing over and over, blessing Boaz, blessing Ruth, blessing Naomi, these blessings being poured out, blessing Israel because of what comes from this incredible story, Ruth and Boaz. Verse 15, may he also be to you a restorer of life and a sustainer of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you and is better to you than seven sons has given birth to him. So beautiful stating the power of commitment and loyalty this faithfulness who loves you they say and is better to you than seven sons sons when you have a son that is honor that is that is respect that is your worth that is back then in this culture when you had a son that was a huge deal that he would raise up the son and having that inheritance that blessing that firstborn that that was huge and for for this um you know, for these women to speak this, for this city to acknowledge this, that Ruth's love for her mother-in-law, the way that she loved, the way that she was committed, you know, saying that, that her love, the way that she loved them, who Ruth was, having Ruth clinging to her, having Ruth committed to her, that that was better than having seven sons. That is a beautiful statement. Beautiful. I want my commitment. I want the way that I live committed and of purity and, and strength and, and all of this that Ruth was. I want, I want that to be said of me. I want that commitment, you know, to be so strong, to be so authentic, to be so real, to be so just holding that much power, holding that much truth, holding that much love and blessing. I want to live my life in a way that that can be said of me. Uh, verse 16 says, Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her lap and became his nurse. The neighbor women gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. So they named him Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. And that is where that power comes from. Ruth, um, Ruth and Boaz, this story is huge, that their son is Obed who was the grandfather of David. Yes, the same David, King David, the man after God's own heart. Beautiful how God orchestrated this, how God established all this, how God connected all of this. Just thinking, you know, in the land of Moab, that they, that clear back when Elam Malek, that they journeyed to the land of Moab. And because they were there, that, that the, these Moabite women, that they, um, married Eli Malek's sons and that they had passed on, that, that they had died even in the sorrow, the grief of thinking, why? Why am I a widow? Why did this happen? Why are we stuck in grief? That God, God had his hand on it. There was, there was a purpose in it. There was growth. There was opportunity. There was connection. There was, there was a drawing. There was teaching. There was so much in that. May we just trust the Lord in that. May we be so committed in our trusting the Lord in that. Um, so good. So then it just lays out the generations. Um, and in verse 18, now these are the generations of Perez. To Perez was born Hezron, and to Hezron was born Ram, and to Ram, Aminadab, and to Aminadab was born uh, Nashon, and to Nashon, Salmon, and to Salmon was Boaz, and to Boaz, Obed, and to Obed was born Jesse, and to Jesse, David. So beautiful how God is such a God of connection and such a God of love and such a God who blesses commitment and goodness and, 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 and integrity and this pureness of heart, um, this selflessness. God sees. He sees what we do. He sees the heart. Not this perfection. He doesn't see who's doing everything right. He's seeing the heart. He is looking into the heart. He knows who we are. He knows who we are and he sees that commitment. He sees how we are choosing to live our lives and he sees and he blesses. He is faithful to bless and we just got to cling to him. We've got to trust him. We've got to be committed to him and remaining in him and watching what he can do. So good. Love, love, love the story of Ruth and Boaz. Love the book of Ruth. Um, we have just completed another book of the Bible. That's amazing. God is continuing to speak. He's continuing to draw. Let's let him just keep 
changing us, keep working in us and making this for real, not making this reading in vain. We don't want to just read. That would just take forever and it would just be frustrating and discouraging and just, oh, there's so much reading, but let's read with purpose. Let's let something come out of this. Let's, let's just allow eternal purpose to soak up every moment we have in diving into his word, diving into his heart. He's so good. Thanks so much for walking this out with me. Such a good story. Let's let it change us. Let's let it soak in. Do something eternal within us. So good. Thanks so much. Uh, stick with me. Let's keep walking this out, journeying together, walking through this process step by step, chapter by chapter. So, so good. So hit me up on my next video. Let's keep doing this together. Let's keep giving God glory. Let's keep letting him change us. So good. Hope to see you soon. See ya.